a species of bird, migrates between Canada, the United States, and Mexico. Each year, the pattern of migration is given by, for the Canadian birds, 30% go to the US, 30% go to Mexico, the rest stay home. For the US birds, 50% go to Canada, none go to Mexico, the rest stay home. For the Mexican birds, 10% go to Canada, none go to the US, and the rest stay home. Want to find the transition matrix for the Markov chain, and we want to find a stable solution. So what's the idea behind a Markov chain? Well, in the problem that we have, when one year goes by, it's not very hard to keep track of where all the birds go. When we get to two, three, or as many years as you like, there's gonna be this business of going back and forth between populations, and that gets a little bit trickier to keep track of. So, first off, a Markov chain is just gonna organize all this intermixing that's going on. Now, what's the setup here? So we're gonna start off with a transition matrix that I'll call A. All the entries of A are gonna be between zero and one inclusive. The sum along each column is gonna be equal to one. So the idea here, we should be thinking of these as probabilities. Then, we're gonna have an initial distribution. It's gonna be a column vector V. So they'll keep track of the populations for the Canadian, the US, and the Mexican birds. Now, if I wanna know the population at time t equals n, we get the population distribution, okay, I'll call it V sub n, by taking our initial distribution V, then we apply our matrix A to it n times. So, every time a year goes by, we just apply A one more time. Now, one thing of interest, the stable population. So the idea here is, if I can find a vector, V, such that when I apply A to it, we get V back. So here we have an eigenvector with eigenvalue equal to one. Then you'll note, okay, our population distribution at any time is always gonna be the same. So if we take V sub N, which is A to the N times V, well, anytime I hit V with A, we get V back, so all those A's go away, and then I'm just left with V. Before we set up our Markov chain, let's get a feel for our numbers. Now, we can summarize all the transitions in a diagram. So if we have our populations in Canada, the US, and Mexico, we let one year go by, then 30% of the Canadian population goes to the US, 30% goes to Mexico, 40% stays at home. For the US, 50% goes to Canada, 50% stays at home. Then for Mexico, 10% goes to Canada, 90% stays at home. Now, let's run some actual numbers through that. So if we suppose we're just starting off with 100 birds in Canada, so none in the US, none in Mexico. One year goes by. We have to split this up into 40%, 30%, and 30%, which gives 40 birds in Canada, 30 in the US, 30 in Mexico. If I let another year go by, then for this 40 in Canada, again, we split up by 40, 30, and 30%, which gives me 16 in Canada, 12 in the US, 12 in Mexico, you add that up, you get a 40 to check your work. For the 30 in the US, we split up into 50 and 50, half stay at home, half go to Canada. So at 15 in the US, 15 in Canada. And then finally, for the 30 in Mexico, we're split it up as 90 and 10%. So we'll have 27 in Mexico, three in Canada. Now, for a final answer, we have to lump like populations for a given country together. So it's gonna give me 34 in Canada, 27 in the US, 39 in Mexico. Now, 
for the transition matrix. What this will do, note here, this is a very simple case where, okay, we have just 100 in Canada, so nothing in the US and Mexico to start, and we're only going out for two years. So if we wanna do something more complicated, I could have populations in each one we start, and we could go out for say 10 or 15 years. The transition matrix is gonna let us do all that bookkeeping just with matrix multiplication. Now, how do we set up our transition matrix? Recall, if I have a linear transformation from Rn to Rm, I can represent that as matrix multiplication. So that just means there's gonna be some matrix A out there, so that if we evaluate T on the vector V, the answer is the same as taking our matrix A and multiplying by V. The recipe for A, if I want the ith column of A, we just take our linear transformation and evaluate at the ith standard basis vector. So it's gonna have a one in the ith position and then zeros everywhere else. Now, in our case, okay, so I'm gonna let the first entry represent population in Canada, second entry, population in the US, third entry, population in Mexico. So if I have one bird in Canada, that's gonna to go to 0.4 birds in Canada, 0.3 birds in the US, 0.3 birds in Mexico. And then we can work it out for one bird in the US and one bird in Mexico. We get our columns, so we get our transition matrix as follows. Now, to check our work, let's try it out on the problem we had earlier. So I'm gonna have 100 birds in Canada only. We're gonna take it out two years. So I'm gonna multiply the vector 100, 0, 0, times a squared. Now if we multiply by a once, we're gonna get 40, 30, 30. And then if I apply again, I get 34, 27, 39. And that agrees with my previous answer. Now that we have our transition matrix, we can look for a stable solution. So here, we're looking for a non-zero vector V such that A times V gives us V back. That means V is gonna be an eigenvector for A with eigenvalue equal to one. Now, to solve this, we just take the equation AV equals V, I move the V to the other side, so we have AV minus V equals zero, and if I wanna factor a matrix out of the V, we just pull out the identity matrix. So we're trying to solve A minus I times V equals zero. So I'm just trying to find the null space of A minus I. Now, to do that, we write down A minus I. Our first step, we can multiply through each row by 10, take out the decimals. Then we just row reduce. And when we do that, we'll wind up with, okay, this matrix here, which is almost in reduced row echelon form but it's good enough to work with for us. Now, with a little bit of foreshadowing, okay, so if we have x1, x2, and x3, if I let x3 be equal to 15, okay, it's gonna be our free variable since it's in the column without a pivot. You'll note, when we translate, we'll have three x1 minus 15, zero, five x2 minus 15, zero, so we'll have x1 equal to five, x2 equal to three, my stable solution is gonna be 5, 3, 15. To check my work, if I multiply that vector by A, I should get V back. So if you work it out, that's gonna be the case. That's my stable solution. Now, since this is an eigenvector, we'll also have a stable solution if I multiply by a constant. In our case, we're working with populations, so we have to have that each entry is greater than zero, so I can only multiply by positive constants. Now, for this to be useful, okay, in this case, the total population would be 23. We just add up. So I don't have to refer to the population total. So we give our answer as a fraction. So our answer will be, if we want to assign a fraction to each country, 
We'll have 523rds going to Canada, 323rds going to the US, 1523rds going to Mexico. So these population percentages are going to be the ones such that we have equilibrium. If we let a year go by, the population count is not going to change, although the populations are going to move around. For our problem, we skip a main step in our usual procedure for finding eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Now, normally, we compute our characteristic polynomial, we find the zeros, and that gives us the eigenvalues. If I have a transition matrix, we automatically know that we have an eigenvalue equal to one, and that gives us a stable solution. Now, why is this true? First, let's take a look at a trick. If we have a square matrix, the sum along any row is always equal, then I'm going to have an eigenvalue equal to that sum with corresponding eigenvector 1, 1, 1. Now, see why that's true? Well, if we take our matrix times this vector, each row column product is just going to be taking the sum of the row. So 1, 1, 1 is going to go to sum, sum, sum. Now, for an example, consider our matrix A. I take its transpose. So before we had sum along the columns was equal to 1. So I take the transpose, sum along the rows is going to be equal to 1. We work it out. Then you note 1, 1, 1 goes to 1, 1, 1. So we have an eigenvalue equal to 1. Sum along any row is equal to 1. Now, to see why a transition matrix always has eigenvalue equal to 1, I just need to show with our trick that the eigenvalues for a matrix are going to be the same as the eigenvalues for the transpose of a matrix. Now, to do that, we have two things we'll need to show. The first thing, we want to know that the determinant of a matrix is equal to the determinant of the transpose of the matrix. That we can see if we consider what's happening in the cofactor expansion. So if you work it out in expansion along the row, say, transpose, it's going to be the same expansion, but now going down a column. Okay, the numerical work will be exactly the same. Then we just want to work out our characteristic polynomial for the transpose of the matrix. So you'll note, okay, if we take characteristic polynomial for B, okay, we write it out. By part one, I could take the transpose and get the same answer. Then I can distribute the transpose, and then you note we have the characteristic polynomial of the transpose of the matrix. So the characteristic polynomials are the same, so we'll have the same eigenvalues.